Let's cry to that God who answers by fire. Father, we come to you tonight. Hey, Makushanda Mahai. Lord God, help us. Help us. Send help, God. Send help. Send help. Send help to the earth, God. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, come to the rescue, Lord. Let not your people perish in fear. Let not your people, oh God, bow to the forces of hell. Oh God, but cast down imaginations tonight. Cast down every fear, every depression, every anxiety. Oh God, you, you said men's hearts shall fail them for fear. But we rebuke that fear tonight. We rebuke it out of the people of God. Oh God, let the atmosphere, let there be a climate change. Let there be a spiritual climate change. Oh God, let the prayers and worship go up and see the clouds of glory that blessings will fall down. Even tonight, God, send the word in our spirits to lift us up. I pray you'll send the word to strengthen us. Send the word to hold us. Send the word to cleanse us. Send the word to heal us. In the name of Yeshua, oh God, Hamashika, the Christ, the anointed one send a word tonight we pray in the name of Jesus send a word oh God that your people may be healed send a word oh God that your people may hear send a word oh God in the name of Jesus those who are watching online those God who may come in those who may oh God just be clicking through oh let something grip them let something grab them in the name of Jesus, let something cause a change. Oh God, send help tonight. Send help tonight. Send help tonight as we gather to pray, as we gather to study, as we gather to call upon you, as we gather to intercede. Is there another intercessor in this house tonight? Could you help me for the next two minutes? Let's just cry out to God. Let's cry out for the peace of Jerusalem. Let's cry out against the sickness and the diseases that have been loosed upon the earth. Oh God, we know that these things must come to pass, but you call upon us to pray. You said in spite of what is going to happen, we must pray. We must pray. Help us to pray, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for salvation tonight. I pray for somebody sitting on the fence, somebody who has not decided to yield, somebody who is just, oh God, sitting on the periphery of the church, watching things and waiting for the right time. Help them to know that now is the time. Now is the time to repent. Now is the time to, oh God, give their hearts to you. I pray, God, that a passion for lost people will come upon Togak. I pray, oh God, you shift us into, oh Lord, the mode of reaching those who are not saved, those who have been lost and bound by sin and nature's night. Oh God, help us tonight, we pray. Help us tonight, we pray. Is there a word? worship in this house. Let's stand to our feet right now. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Let's stand to our feet and let us cry out to God with our hands lifted to heaven one more time before we go into the word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, send help God. Can we ask God to send help not just to us here tonight, but send help to those soldiers on the battlefield in Israel as they gather on the banks of Gaza. Oh God, as I was looking over this, oh God, I realized that these are the same Philistines. These are the same Philistines. It's the same people. Oh God, they just changed the name from Philistine to Palestine. It's the same people that David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? It's the same people that have plague the children of Israel from the from the days of Dagon when the ark of the covenant was captured by the Philistines and taken into the temple of Dagon and they brought the ark before Dagon and the next morning hallelujah it fell down and they 
propped him up. Hallelujah. The next day he fell down. In this time his hands and his feet and his head was gone. I pray that the same power that chopped off the head of Dagon. The same power that chopped off the feet of Dagon. The same power that chopped off the hands of Dagon. That same God would rise up in this hour. Let this loss of life not be for weeks and mother but do a quick work oh god root out oh god supernaturally intervene i am asking you god there's so many people who are fitting to lose their lives as some would say but in the name of jesus i am asking for divine intervention God, can you help me pray tonight? Lord, intervene. Lord, intervene. Lord, 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 Lord of hosts. Lord, God, is there a praying church tonight? Lord, intervene. We know, God, our, our, our ability to change everything is limited. But God, you told us to pray. And if there is somebody who can pray, then there can be change. And so on this side of the world... In the United States of America, in the city of Orlando, Okoye, we cry out from Tabernacle of Glory for this situation in Israel tonight. The drum beats, the horsemen, Hakushatai, they have been loosed upon the earth. But God send one angel like you did that day. Send one angel, root out every terrorist, root out Makushatai every wicked let the hostages be returned without the loss of one in the name of Jesus by divine mandate man can do this but I know you can man can find them but you can Oh God, those two boys, oh 16 and 14 I believe, or 12 and whatever their ages are, that woman came and she's begging for her boys to be returned. I pray, oh God. God, I have children. I cannot imagine if my children, oh God, were taken, how I would feel. But tonight I pray for them. I pray for them that they will not be harmed. I pray for them. Send an angel into Gaza. Send them into the tunnels. Send them into the secret places where they're hiding them. And God, like you woke up Peter, let there be an earthquake. Let there be an earthquake. And let that earthquake shake where they are and let the power of God show up. Oh God, let the earth see that there is still a God. Let the earth see that God fights for his people. Oh God, you told Jehoshaphat, oh God, to send the singers. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Oh God, fight for your people. Oh, can you help me pray tonight? Saints, we got to pray. Oh, talking won't solve it. But if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Oh, God, we have no other answer. We have no other source. Oh, God, to whom else shall we go? Who else shall we call upon? The American government, they are limited. They can send weapons. Oh, God, but they can't deliver like you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we pray for the situation we pray for it can you help me pray church oh God I just need one person to help me cry out oh God hallelujah we got two more minutes cry out to him cry out to him oh God for every hostage cry out to him for every grieving husband and wife cry out to him for those two children who will grow up and spend the rest of their lives without a mother and a father let's pray let's pray for wisdom for for, for the prime minister of israel for those god even the wicked who have oh who god are now spewing hatred even in the streets of america in the streets of new york in the streets of orlando florida oh god let not the hatred spill out and shed blood in this country Oh God, oh God, 
Oh God, hear us, we pray. Hear us, we pray, as we cry unto you. Oh God, we pray. We pray in the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. Hayamokosha. We pray in the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. Come on and bless his name. Hallelujah. We pray in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands to heaven and give him praise. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Hey, ma, 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 give him praise. If you're on the prayer line, give him praise. If you're on Facebook, give him praise. If you're on YouTube, give him praise. Oh, yes, because our God is a deliverer. Our God is a way maker. Oh, yes, yes. Hallelujah. I remember Elijah was in a situation where he was besieged. And when the young man went out, he saw the armies. Oh, God gathered around them and he got afraid. But Elijah prayed. He prayed and he said, open his eyes. That he might see. Can, I ask, can we ask God, open our eyes. Open our eyes to see that you're going to fight in this battle. Oh, fight in this battle. Jehovah Gibor. Oh, mighty God. Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Tiskinu. Fight. Fight for your people and protect those who are here tonight. In Jesus' name, can we give God praise? Can we give God praise? Amen. Amen. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Greetings to the house of the faith. Good to see everyone coming out on this rainy Wednesday night. Oh God, I was uh, saying to my wife as I was leaving earlier that amen. When rain falls, people get kind of cozy at home, but I'm glad you all came. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Can we turn to Matthew 25? Amen. I want to continue my series on buy in and we're going to see if we can interweave some of what's going on skillfully but truly god is good to israel amen god is good to togak and we're so grateful to see sister sharon tonight amen good to see you my sister glory be to god we've been praying for you the strength of the lord is yours and you have the victory tonight to all those who are watching go ahead and share out this broadcast share it on your timeline to your friends on facebook and youtube Amen. Get your Bibles out. I know you're watching from home, in your cars, in your bedroom, in your living room. Amen. Wherever you're watching from, amen, we're going to the word of the Lord. We, we promise we won't. We're just going to um, give you an overview tonight and we finish on Sunday. It's in Matthew 25, verse 1 through 12. The kingdom of heaven, or then the kingdom of heaven, shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps. And I want you to look at that clause right there. And took no oil with them. Ask your neighbor, where is your oil? Where is your extra oil? But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So it tells us that not only did they take their lamps, but they had oil. Just in case the oil ran out. The Bible says, but while the bridegroom was delayed, this is a very important part of this text. The bridegroom was delayed. They all slumbered and slept. So everybody slept. Verse number six. And at midnight. You remember that song at a midnight cry? Amen. A cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him i think the king james says go ye out to meet him all right then all those virgin rose arose and trimmed their lamps that means they lit it amen 
And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. Ooh. My God. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready, those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door was shut, Brother Clint. Ooh. The door was shut. Now, it's, it's, it's bad that the door was shut, but what comes after is worse. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. We are also virgins and we have everything now. But he answered and said, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know not neither the day, help me, sound man, nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Father, as we traverse this text, we pray for insight, that the spirit of the teacher, that revelation and understanding be given to your people so we can be better prepared for your coming. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. I want to juxtapose this text with a text my brother is dealing with in Avon Park, Bishop Williams, uh, he has been teaching through Peter. And there's a text in Peter that talks about the coming of the Lord. And I'd just like to throw it in there. I think it's in Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 3. It says, Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of a reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this verse, look at verse 3. It says, Knowing this verse, this is up there, that there shall come in the last days coffers walking after their own lusts and saying, what are they saying? Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willfully forget, but by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. That's a whole message right there. By which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Look at verse 8. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one. Can I just stick something real quick? So when, when you're suffering for 20 years God says it's 20 seconds in his time so we need to always constantly ask God to give us his mind so that we don't get perturbed because what we see as a long time God says is no time amen verse 9 says the Lord is not slack Concerning his promise, a 
as some count slackness, but is long suffering to us, Ward, not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. That's a text right there that this troublesome people. It is not God's will that any should perish. All right. Verse 10 says, but as the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Now, do you see the nexus between what we just read earlier and the day of the Lord and the thief in the night? The bridegroom came at midnight. So the Lord, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with the fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be? And here is where we're going to find the link. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of people ought you to be in holy conduct? And I think this says holy conversation. So when the Bible says evil communication corrupt good manners, um, it is not talking about... Um, what you say in the context of the word the word there if you look at how the new king james translated it says so what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct it is the lifestyle all right and godliness looking for and hastening the coming of the day of god because of which the heavens will be dissolved being on fire and the elements will melt with fervent heat Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for the new heavens and a new earth in which dwelleth righteousness. All right, so that's the nexus I'd like to bring. The story of Matthew greeting saints, one more time, good to see everyone, is one of the most intriguing passages in Scripture. The parable of the ten virgins is a well-known parable. It is almost as famous and popular in some circles as the parable of the good samaritan the good samaritan of course is the most beloved and well known of jesus's parables the parable of the sower is also very popular but this this particular parable of um, the ten virgins is intriguing and i'd just like to throw up throw out something for you to to, 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 to tickle your minds a little bit. Notice who, it's good to notice who is in the story. But do you notice who is not in the story? We have the bridegroom, and we have the bridesmaids the ten virgins. But do you realize there's no bride in the story? The bride is not mentioned at all. So one of the things we now have to be careful of is how we interpret it and willingly apply the concept of the bridesmaids to the bride. The bridesmaids are not the bride. The bridesmaids are the helpers of the bride. This will be significant when we give you the backstory. Now, the setup for this story is when Jesus says, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened. Whenever you see the word likened, we're using figurative language. Now, you know there are metaphors and um, there are similes. For example, Jesus said, tell Herod that fox. Now we know that Herod was not a fox, but his characteristics were like a fox. Um, uh, so whenever we see the word like, what we're doing is we are making a comparison. Whenever you see a figurative use of like, where Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like, what he's doing, he's saying, how God's kingdom operates is going to be like this story I'm going to tell you. 
Now, for us to understand Matthew 25, um, my students at the college will tell you, you have to be contextual. So you have to read where the story began. And where did the story begin? If you have your Bible, the story begins in chapter 24. In chapter 24, the Bible says, Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And um, he's now at the place where the Pharisees and the scribes are looking to kill him. And they're looking to destroy him. And uh, Jesus looks at the temple and he says, Within three days... I shall destroy this temple and raise it up. And they thought, when they heard this, they thought Jesus was going to physically destroy the temple at Jerusalem. And this tells us something. This tells us that those who were supposed to be closest to him, they were really dense. And that can also mean, even to us today, that you think that people who have been walking with God for a long time should know some stuff. And never assume that anybody knows anything. Are you hearing me? Because they didn't even realize that he wasn't talking about the physical temple. He was talking about the body of this temple, which would be killed on the cross. Well, depending on where your vantage point is, they thought they killed him, but he really laid down his life. But in any case, they killed him, and he said that in three days, I am going to raise this up. So the body was the temple, which was going to be destroyed. So when look at verse 1 of chapter 24 in Matthew, and you know Matthew is writing to the Jews, and they're big on the temple. So he, they're big on the kingdom of heaven. They're big on the kingdom of God because uh, Matthew is trying to present Jesus Christ as the king of the Jews. He is the king that was promised. He is the one that's going to be David's son. And today, Orthodox Jews do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Do you know that? The Jews in New York, in, 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 in Brooklyn, and in all those places that are Jewish, they reject Jesus as the Son of God. They call him he who was crucified on the tree. They think that he was just a common criminal. But we know, hallelujah, he was not just any ordinary man. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. Are you hearing me tonight? And so... From then, they, the disciples and the scribes and the Pharisees, for all practical purposes, they're all in the same boat. They never knew who Jesus was. And so he says, verse, 20, or verse 1, Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. So they were walking in the grounds of the temple, and Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? So Jesus is now talking to them. He says, Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Jesus Christ was prophesying the destruction of the temple of uh, Her Herod's temple in AD 70 by that Roman general Titus. And uh, there was a rebellion in AD 69 and the Romans said, We've had enough of you. Because the whole area was occupied by Rome. Rome was the ruling power. And those who went to the class, you know what we're talking about. The Roman Empire was the ruling empire. And they had given the Jews what is called self-autonomy so they could govern themselves. And any time they rose up and they came against Caesar, they would send in the Roman army and beat them back down. Because these guys were brutal. The Romans were uh, very, very vicious almost worse than Hamas. They, they were, the, the Roman army was one of the most feared fighting forces in the history of the world. They were brutal. And so the army general Titus came, he went into the temple and he uh, sacrificed a pig on the altar. My God, and he desecrated the temple and he told his soldiers, burn it down and don't leave one stone. And they destroyed the temple. 
And Jesus is here prophesying that would happen. But now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Master, you know we kind of slow. Tell us, he, they asked three things. Tell us, when shall these things be? What will be the sign of your coming? And of the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. And he goes through chapter 4, chapter 24, and he tells us what will happen, how we shall know. Now, there are many views, and one of the things you must realize is that a lot of what Jesus said had a present and future interpretation so some things were going to happen right then but they also had future implications the temple that he's talking about was destroyed 37 years later when the romans destroyed it but when you look down many will come in my name saying i'm christ will deceive many you'll hear wars and rumors of wars nation will rise against nation Kingdom against kingdom, there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes. Are we seeing these things now? Amen. I don't know if you can pull up, um, uh, Brandon, my uh, presentation from Sunday. And uh, you, you will see that I had um, the, 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 I think this thing happened on Saturday, right? So by Sunday, we, we, we knew, we, we now have war in Israel. I think this is actually... The, is the Israelis bombing Gaza. So they have intelligence on the ground that these people have these different places where they have weapons and they have uh, communication systems and um, they are able then to pinpoint with geolocation and satellites. They literally have satellites that <clears throat> are dedicated to watch Gaza. This is why a lot of people are saying, how in the world were so many people able to come across the border and they not know? That's for another discussion off camera. But there's a lot going on in the world. But for, for what it's worth, Jesus prophesied that in the last days, in answer to the questions, tell us when shall these things be? He's saying that there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. Is this the only war taking place? No. If you go two slides down, I believe there's a, a slide there showing you that there's also war. Skip that one. Come back to earthquakes in a minute. There, there's a war going on between Ukraine and Russia. There's war going on in Africa. There, 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 there is coups and um, war in Syria. There's war in, in Yemen. There's war, internal conflicts in Sudan, in Somalia. Brethren, this earth is filled with war. Everywhere. There are gang wars in L.A., gang wars in Chicago, gang wars in New York, Gun, uh, if you watch these videos on YouTube, uh, young black men taking out other drug dealers from across. They got turf wars going on. So it's not just nations against nations. You got internal strife. And these things are sis systematic and representative of an ongoing war in the realm of the spirit. As there is war in the heavenlies, there's also war on the earth, which is also indicative of a war inside of all of us. There's a war inside of you, a war to live right, a war to worship, a war to pray. How many of you had to fight war to come to Bible study tonight? Can I get a witness up in here? Amen. I, I don't know, but it's raining and we're just looking at the enemy saying, no, you don't have to go. Just watch online. My pastor will understand. God understand. You have to drive and spend gas. It's a war in your spirit.
spirit war. You got to go to work tomorrow at 6 o'clock. We got to get up to go teach those jits. Amen. It's a war. It's a war in your body. Your body wants to sleep. Amen. You want to do what is right. Paul said, when I would do good, I find evil present with me. So Jesus is not just speaking of a geographical, physical war. He's also alluding to that there shall be spiritual wars, the kingdom of darkness against the kingdom of light. We all are dealing with warfare. Paul says the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but not carnal, but they are mighty through God, the pulling down of strongholds. And so Jesus is outlining, hey man, uh, it, to, to answer the question of the disciples, tell us when will these things be? Now notice Jesus didn't give them specific dates. He just gave them the characteristics of the time. It, these things will be when these things happen. So when we see these things happen, then we know that the coming of the Lord is near. Somebody tell, say to your neighbor, he's, soon, he's coming soon. Oh yes, tell somebody he's coming soon. He's coming soon. On the prayer line, he's coming soon. On Zoom, on Facebook, on, on, on uh, wherever you're watching from, Jesus is coming soon. The Bible says all these things are, verse 8, the beginning of sorrows. Verse 9, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. He's telling the disciples that they are going to be murdered. Do you know that 11 of the 12 disciples were all murdered for the name of Jesus Christ? And they didn't die like they gave them poison to drink. No. Peter was crucified upside down according to history. Um, Thomas was uh, run through by a spear. They all died horribly. The only one who never died horribly was John according to history. Not according to the world but according to history. They tried to kill him. History says they put him a, in a pot of oil and burned him. And they poured out the oil and John came walking out and said is that all you got? That's what history says. And then it's okay, since we can't kill you, I don't know why they didn't just chop his head off, but they put him on the Isle of Patmos to go break rocks for the rest of his life. And on there, he got a revelation that we now have called the book of Revelation. They, work, they will kill you and deliver you up in tribulation, kill you, and you will be hated. Who's he talking to? Jesus told the disciples, you will be hated by everybody. Why? For my name's sake. The hatred of Christians today is at an all-time high. People used to tolerate us, but now, I was in a classroom one time, and a student brought up the issue of of God and this is one student who just vehemently said Christians are the worst and it's because Christians would stand up against some things that are wrong and that offends people and so this is going to be a sign of the times when Christianity and those who believe in Christ will be hated verse 10 and then many will be offended and will what? Betray one another. And will hate one another. Then many false prophets will arise. And deceive many. Are we seeing these things? And because iniquity. I think the King James says iniquity. Lawlessness. Shall what? Abound. Increase. The love of many. Are we seeing this? The love of many will grow cold. So why, it is so funny. The believer's love is growing cold. And Paul says, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. So instead of us being able to change the world, the world is making us grow cold. We see it. 
We see it, brethren. The willingness to make sacrifices for God. People will make more sacrifice for their dog than God. I have a friend of mine who is an animal doctor type person. And he says, Rev, the amount of money I see these people spend on their dogs. Do you know dogs have surgeries? Do you know dogs have manicures and pedicures? Do you know dogs have monthly checkups? Do you know dog go to the dentist? Do you know dogs get cancer and, and get radiation and chemo? He was trying to tell me all the I'm like, like people are spending money on chemo for a dog? Pastor, that sounds mean. But I'm trying to tell you that the people's love for God is being overwritten by love for the things that don't even make any sense. So he goes on and he's talking to us in Matthew 24 and he's telling us that these things are going to precede the coming of the Lord. Verse 37 says, but as the days of Noah were, so will also be the coming of the Son of Man. And he's telling us Two shall be grinded in the mill, one shall be taken. Verse 42 says, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. So what Jesus is saying is that your question is going to cause me to tell you the characteristic of the time that you're going to live in. That there's going to be a delay in the return of Christ. And this delay is going to result in some people falling asleep, in meaning the people of God. So what we're seeing, beloved, as we get ready to, to, to close, is that he uses this, this uh, parable, and he says, the kingdom of heaven, or in other words, God's plan, God's end time program, God, the way God is operating and what is going to happen in the earth is like this story. So he tells a story to help them to appreciate how they should be thinking about his coming. Because they want to know, when are you going to come? When shall they? Look, look at verse 24, verse, verse, verse 3. Tell us when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? end of the age. So I am going to give you a parable. There were ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. Now he says they took their lamps and went out to meet the bride, the bridegroom. So what did Jesus do? He uses a custom or a situation or a scenario that these people were familiar with. This is a wedding setup. So let me end our presentation tonight by explaining to you from John 14 what in the world is going on. Unless you are familiar with the a the and or the, air, the ancient Near East custom of weddings, you have no idea what Jesus is doing here. Because this story is really a, 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 a sample of what happens during a wedding. Let me give you an idea of what happens during a Jewish wedding. You have to go back to John 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house. I never understood this until I realized what is going on here. In my Father's house are many mansions. That don't make no sense. How can a mansion be in a house? You understand what I'm saying? In my father's house are many mansions. Where my father has his spread, his ranch, you have many houses on the ranch. Or in my father's big spread, you have many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So look at the paradox. If this house have many rooms or mansions why does he need to prepare anywhere else why 
because he's making room for his bride. Let me tell you a quick story. In ancient Israel, you got betrothed. So let's say Michaela or Brianna finds a nice guy or a guy finds them. The groom would go to the dad and say, I want to marry your daughter. And they would begin to work out a price. It is almost as if the man is buying the woman, but he's not really buying. It's called a dowry. You got to provide. You got to present a dowry to the parents of the bride. So let's say you're betrothed on January first. You are engaged. This is almost like a wedding contract. You cannot get out of it unless you get a divorce. This is why when Mary and Joseph were engaged and she was found to be pregnant, G, uh, the, um, Joseph wanted to put her away and divorce her because you can't just engage and just break up the engagement. No, you had to get a divorce. So you get engaged and then for a whole year, the bridegroom leaves the bride at her father's house. He goes to his father's house and he calls in Lowe's, he calls in Home Depot, he buys some block, he buys some steel, and he puts on a room on his father's house to put his bride. Are you hearing me? So <clears throat> Jesus is using the illustration of a Jewish wedding. He's gone away. He's going to prepare a place. Then he's going to, after some time unknown to the bride, around a year, he's going to go back to the, the woman's house. And some scholars say that a lot, the, the length of time and the time that he came back was due to haggling. Many times they would offer a dowry of 10 cows. And the father said, no, man, my daughter is worth more than 10 cows. You need to come again. So sometimes they had to go work to make up that dowry. And so when they finally um, agreed on the price, he would go back, praise the name of the Lord. And so this scenario in Matthew 25, when Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. He's saying, just like in ancient Near East, Jesus Christ is, the, is betrothed to the church. He is gone away to prepare a place for us. Isn't that great? And he's coming back, but we don't know when he's coming back. So Jesus is saying, you have to be prepared. So here it is now that these bridesmaids are going to be those who will help the bride to prepare for the coming of her husband. And so Jesus is trying to teach them that the bridegroom is coming back you do not know when he's coming back. The motive here is that we need to be on watch. Someone say on watch. We need to be prepared. Are we prepared tonight? How many people were unprepared when those guys came in disguise on, on paragliders and they broke through the fence? They, they, they weren't prepared. It, it seemed that way. 22 different points of entry on the, the border of Israel. They came by land. They came by sea. And they came by air. It was a full out planned assault. This wasn't planned by Hamas. This, this, this was planned somewhere else. To send a message. And tonight I'm saying to the church. I'm saying to those who are watching. That the same way these terrorists. Attacked Israel and caught them unaware. Jesus says. The bridegroom is going to come back. And find many of us not ready. Someone say help me Lord. Behold the bridegroom cometh. They had to take a lamp. It was more like a torch. It wasn't a you know, it was weak lamp. It was a torch. That had a piece of rag wrapped around it, and you dip it in kerosene and you light it. So what happens is, after he keeps burning, then the kerosene burns out. Then you got to pour oil on it again and start it. So when the bridegroom took long to come, they all went to sleep. 
and the church is in that mode right now. But the bridegroom is about to come and Jesus is giving us a warning. These things that are happening in the earth are the earth telling us to wake up and get our oil. Sunday I'm going to finish this. God wants us to let us know it's time to buy some oil. It's time to buy oil now. It's time to get prayed up now. It's time to read your Bible now. It's time to know God now. Oh God, I'm, I'm going to talk about borrowing on Sunday. Because some things cannot be borrowed. You can borrow money, but you cannot borrow faith. Oh yes, you can borrow my anointing. You need your own anointing. You can borrow love. You can borrow joy. You need your own joy. Hallelujah. He says, I never knew you, meaning they never had a relationship. Do you have a relationship with him tonight? You can borrow your husband's relationship or your wife's relationship. Clifton, you can borrow the pastor's relationship. We all need our own. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Let's lift our hands to heaven. He uses this story to teach about being prepared. Being prepared. Being prepared. And the Lord is saying to us, he's using the situations around us, it's time to prepare. It's time to get our house in order. Let's stand to our feet, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's ask him to help us. We used to sing a song, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Jesus gone to prepare. You remember that song, Sister Sharon? A mansion for me, far, far away, over the sea. No sickness, no sorrow, no pain, no, no woe. Jesus gone to prepare. We're looking for him. We're looking, we're looking, we're looking. We're looking for his return. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Lord, help me to be ready. Brethren, we can't be getting ready. We have to be ready. Oh, God. Oh, yes. We can't be getting ready. Whatever we need to fix, we got to fix it now. Whatever we need to get right, we, never, we need to get it right now. Whatever we need to do, we need to do it now. Whatever prayer we need to pray, we need to pray it now. Whatever we got to do, we have to do it now. Buy oil now. Glory. Get oil now. Because when you go to buy the oil, the shop is going to be locked. At midnight. My God, shop lock at midnight. Oh God. There's some things that have to be done at a certain time. Oh God, help me here tonight. Oh God, I pray tonight for your people. Wake us up, God. Wake us up. Wake us up. Because when I get to Revelation, my third by, the Bible says Jesus was on the outside of the church. That's what the Laodicean in church. Jesus had left the church and was outside knocking to get into his own church because the people, and he says, buy of me gold. I'm not going to talk about that tonight, but we're going to get there the third week. I'm telling you, now is the time to buy. I told you to buy the truth last week and sell it not. Tonight and Sunday, I'm going to talk about buying the oil. Oh, hallelujah. Tell somebody, buy some oil. Buy some oil. Ooh, glory be to God. Buy. They took no oil. They, they thought they wouldn't need it. But the bridegroom took long to come. He never came when they thought he would come. So he lingered. And while he lingered, they fell asleep. Are you asleep tonight? Father, we thank you for your word. We pray. We pray. We pray. We pray. We pray. Help us to be ready. Help us to be ready. God, help us to know you. In the power of your resurrection and in the fellowship of your suffering. God, we pray that we'll not sleep or slumber, but we'll wake up. Wake us up, God. Wake up the church. Wake up the all night prayer. Wake up the daily prayer. Wake up the fasting. Wake up the study of the word. Wake us up in this hour. In the name of Jesus.
the name of Jesus. Bless your people. Strengthen your people. Remember Israel tonight. Remember. Remember those soldiers. God, I think of those wives as they kiss their husbands goodbye. Some of them knowing, God, that they may never see their husbands again. As they go in the battlefields of Gaza, as they breach that perimeter and go into booby-trapped homes, roads filled with landmines, snipers, God, they're waiting for them. They're waiting for them. They knew they would come. And they're prepared to give their lives for 70 virgins. Oh, God, they've been lied to. And they're living a lie and they don't even know it. But, God, I pray you'll comfort these women and these children as they watch their fathers and their brothers go off to war. Lord Jesus, would you send an angel and just fix this, God? Fix it only the way only you can like you did in 1967 when oh god there were reports of of, of angelic presence on the golan heights as you fought for israel against syria oh god i pray you'll do it one more time and prevent the loss of so many lives god i am asking you tonight to intervene intervene in the middle east god holy spirit i'm asking you to intervene tonight in the name of jesus step up let those hostages be returned. Let those Hamas terrorists give up. When Let the fear of God come upon them. Release a mighty angel with a flaming sword. Stand over Gaza! Jesus, God, 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 God. I dare to pray it. I dare to ask you, fight for your people. Prevent the loss of any more lives. And deliver the wicked into the hands of God. Oh God, I pray. Help us, help us to be careful what we say in this hour. And give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, saints. Praise God. I hope you receive something to help you on your journey. Amen. We're going to receive an offering. Thank you all for being here. Those on the prayer line, Pastor Forbes is back. God bless you, Pastor Forbes. Amen. And all the saints. Amen. Uh, who are watching by way of YouTube and Facebook. Thank you for your prayers. Continue to keep our associate pastor in your prayer. Amen. Continue to keep. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord, Sister Tasha. Praise the Lord. Come on and give God the praise. Come on and give God the praise. Come on and give God the praise. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. This Saturday, we go to um, Pastor Hyde. They begin, I believe, I think it's at 6. So I have space for, well, Pastor Forbes, I think you're coming with me. And also Mother Reed. So I have space for about four people. So if you'd like to come, please see me. I didn't put out a sheet. Um, so if you'd like to come, come talk to me. We will talk, Mother Reed. We will talk, Mother Reed. We'll talk. Praise the Lord Jesus. She's ready to go. God bless you. Let's raise our hands. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, um, those who are watching, we will be at Pastor Hyde this Saturday. And next week, we're going to be at God's Spare Life, and there's no attack in America. We will be at Pastor John for his appreciation. And then the week after will be Pastor Maxwell. So all the Saturdays will be at Faith Temple, Heaven Bound, and Lighthouse of Christ. Amen. And the last week, I'm just giving you a heads up, the last week in October will be our seven days fasting and prayer for our convention. And um, all the leaders are reminded of their gifts, uh, which must be turned in by the end of October, those to support the convention. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, see me after. Um, uh, at 
think that's it. All right, God bless. Uh, Father, bless this offering we have received in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed, and thank you for joining us online and on Facebook. God bless you.